So what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology iPhone 12 mini for review. Now you can see right away there's some dust on that phone, and I wanted to leave that there because I wanted to mention that if you go with this darker color here, you're likely going to attract a lot of lint, dust, stuff like that if you don't put this thing in a case, darker colors usually do show more dust, so do keep that in mind. If you don't want that to happen, get yourself one of the lighter colors of the iPhone, like the mint greenish looking one of the mini, or you can get that white color. Also, another thing I wanna point out, this video is being shot on iPhone 12. Of course, this is in a, in a controlled environment, so you're not gonna get the same audio. I'm using my own microphone out of the phone itself, but just give you a good idea how crispy the video can, you can achieve with iPhone 12 mini because it has the same cameras as the camera that's shooting this video. So I did go with the 128 gigabyte storage, of course, in the black color. And definitely, I think this is the sweet spot. So if you're looking for, you know, a little bit more than 64 and you want it to last, you want to take some 4K video, you want to do some photos, but you don't want to pay the top tier price of the 256 gig, this can slot in a good middle range, good value option here. I think if you love this iPhone 12 mini. Now, I firstly wanna talk about the body, the width, the height. Now, first of all, I do wanna state that in my full review here that the iPhone 12 mini, because the screen has stretched to 5.4 inches, it doesn't have that same, you know, really tiny top to bottom feel as the iPhone SE. And Apple knows this, that's why they didn't put the power button back up here. They put it here because that reach up there is not as comfortable as uh, it would be right here. So it's actually in the perfect location to put the iPhone 12 mini home button right here. Also, I wanna state that in my one week later, I did talk about some touchscreen issues. Those have been fixed with iOS 14.2.1. Face ID wasn't working there because I can't see it through the camera, hold on. Yeah, but anyway, they definitely fixed that issue where you would swipe from the lock screen and we would have some touchscreen issues. That was going on for like the first week or so. It was pretty annoying, but it was quickly fixed. So thumbs up to Apple for that one. I was confident they were gonna fix it, but it wasn't a good look out of the box. Back to dimensions. So top to bottom, you know, even with my big monster hands right here, definitely I can still, I still have to stretch just a little bit on this 5.4. It's really comfortable to hold though. You just have to stretch just a little bit. So I think if you have really small hands, this one's still not gonna be quite as petite, quite as small as the older iPhone 4S days, the older iPhone, when iPhones were 3.5 to four inches, it's not that small. But still, where it does feel that similar feel is side to side. So swiping, you know, if you're typing side to side, or if you're even swipe texting, it's super easy to go ahead and one hand type this thing. And it's about the smallest you're gonna get right now in a current iPhone. So definitely a beautiful overall size here. 135 grams, I've talked about it on numerous occasions. It feels like a featherweight and it's never gonna stop feeling that way. I will add though, if you do start adding bulky cases to protect your investment on the iPhone 12 mini, this phone will start to weigh a lot more than if it's not using a case. So consider your case wisely. If you like to keep the thing light, you might wanna put it in a protective thin case, but if you want to really protect it, you are gonna add quite a substantial amount of weight to this super light phone. This is one of the, probably the lightest modern 5G phone you can buy right now. Really nice at 135 grams. Now you can see, Right over here at the bottom, we do have ourselves the lightning port. We have two holes here. The other iPhone has three, and the iPhone 12 Pro Max has like four. So really a nice, neat touch there. You have the smallest amount there. And then over here, you do have four for the speaker grill on the right there. Now, talking about the notch just a little bit, you know, you kind of notice this a little more on the iPhone 12 mini. I've been noticing it a little bit more just because you don't have a whole ton of screen real estate on this phone to go ahead and not see that thing. So you definitely see it. And I do think the mini will be better served once Apple finds a way to get these things to all screen. It definitely, I hope they keep this phone around. I really hope they keep making the mini and just try to improve on it because I think it's gonna be a great seller this year. But yeah, you do notice the notch a little bit more, but just like with other iPhones, it kind of goes away after you get used to using it. Then you just focus on your applications and whatever you might be doing day to day on your iPhone. So. Overall, it's not gonna be a deterrence from buying this phone, in my personal opinion. Discussing the Super Retina XDR OLED display. So if you are watching a video, you can expect to get 
black bars on the side and that's due to the aspect ratio this is not a 16 by 9 display like you're going to find on the classic iphone se that came out earlier this year that kind of looks like the iphone 8 so you can pinch in now the thing is is that this phone has a very crispy and if you look down here you will see the notch i typically do my videos where you you usually won't have the notch cutting into my videos but certain videos if you pinch in this will cut off some content and stuff like that. Now, you can see right here that you do have nice contrast. If you see that iPhone right there, good color. You know, OLED really gives you those really deep blacks, which makes the contrast pop. However, I will state about this OLED, this is no Samsung-like saturation on this one. So you're not getting that really vibrant look. You get more of an accurate toned down uh, look here. So you're not gonna look at this phone and be like, wow, the colors just are just so vibrant on this phone. It doesn't give that feel. It gives more of a, you know, this nice overall balance contrast. Now on here, more, more similar to like Samsung's natural mode, you can see right here, True Tone it does make the screen a little bit yellow depending on the environment you're in to kind of help your eyes out. And then you have Night Shift over here. We'll go over here, you have Night Shift, Dark Mode. Overall, it's a well-rounded display that gets about 625 nits. And in terms of its sharpness, we talked about that in my one week later. I, I don't want to boast, like I said in my one week later, I don't want to boast about how sharp it is. It is the one of the sharper iPhones, but because it's such a smaller display, you don't really see this that much. So what I mean is the 12, the 12 Pro, the 12 Pro Max, so the average user, they're all gonna look just about as sharp as each other. But technically, if you wanna have the bragging rights of the most pixels per inch, the iPhone 12 mini here does have the sharpest text on the display, and that's because it's cramming the most pixels into the smallest body here. Now, talking about software, because of iOS 14.2.1, I'm very happy with this phone, uh, much more so than when it first launched because of those touchscreen problems I was having, especially with the cases. Some people didn't report that, but I'm not sure if they were using a case because almost everyone I spoke to was reporting that. Now, it's not a, it's a non-issue. I'm just mentioning it because I'm just trying to tell you that at this point, the software is great now. There's no issues with the phone anymore. It just runs perfectly how you would expect. And if you buy a 12 mini right now, maybe try to get it before the holidays, definitely end. You'll be totally fine with this. You'll be very happy with how this thing performs. It performs like the mini flagship that it's intended to be right here. Now in terms of software, you do have yourself the app library. And I like how the software works on the smaller mini. It's, it's neat to have widget support on this phone right here. So if we hit the plus sign, it's nice to have on a smaller phone. It makes a lot of sense here. You know, with the 12 Pro Max, the phone doesn't take advantage of the larger display and doing any split screen, but I don't even care about that on the mini. I don't want that. iPhone 12 mini is a showstopper when it comes to, you know, longevity and support and having a great size for one hand usability. And that brings me on to the A14 Bionic chip. And my one week later, I was referring to this 14 chip is that you're not really going to think about it and if you had if you have used any prior iphone to this like the iphone 10s the iphone 10 10r i would even say all the way up to like the 8 plus the 8 the performance is not that much different you know you will have a gesture if you didn't have this before but it, it doesn't feel that much different when using your day-to-day -day applications and i would almost bet that most of you are just opening up apps you're on about you you got to use some basic stuff, maybe you gotta use a calculator, do some calculations, you're gonna set an alarm clock, you know, to go to bed at night, you can watch some YouTube videos, uh, enjoy the screen for what it is. But where this shines is, a, is an area where I don't think most users are gonna be using it, but if you do use this to edit video, even older iPhones are still doing this fantastic, but it will render this a little faster. So the phone will finish the actual saving of the video a little bit quicker to the gallery. You know, you're gonna have a little bit better performance when opening some graphically intensive game. This is not the most graphically intensive, but when you're opening stuff that really requires to push the processor, you will definitely see it. And if you wanna go ahead and run some synthetic benchmarks, you'll see it, but day to day, it's what you expect. Flagship fast iPhone, that's what you expect to get here. And having four gigs of RAM, for a smaller iPhone, it won't reload apps as much as some of the older two gig of RAM, smaller iPhones like iPhone 7, iPhone 8, for example. So you do get improved performance, technically speaking, in the real world, you don't see it that much as of right now. You will see it probably down the line as older iPhones slow down. But technically speaking, five nanometer chip, you do have the fastest iPhone chip out there right now. Now, when it comes to this battery right here, 
I have to state that I did have this phone in low power mode a lot. You know, 22, 27 milliamp hour battery. It, I mean, this phone cannot accommodate a large battery unless you make it super heavy and bulky in the back. And that would just ruin the overall appearance. That would just ruin the weight. It would just not feel, it would not feel the lightweight, the, the very fun to use small size. It would just feel heavy and chunky, like a chunky small phone. And for that, I would take the trade off of the battery life. Now, some people are going to get in the comments and say, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This battery lasts me all day. You have to remember when it comes to battery, this is very specific to each user. A user who uses this phone heavily throughout the day will notice that this is a terrible battery compared to a larger iPhone that they might have had in the past. If you're the type of person who uses your phone casually, the iPhone 12 mini is going to be just fine for you. What do I mean? A five hour screen on time is fantastic for the average user. However, for somebody who's on YouTube for two hours and they hop over to a game, they're playing that for an hour or two, the battery will be done in about three or four hours. So this phone right here definitely can go a whole day with regular usage. So I'm very happy about that. My type of usage, I actually get through the day. But what I'm saying is that if you really start using it heavy, you blast the brightness, or you're doing 4K video, you're just gonna see this the battery just drain so much faster than larger iPhones. But I still like this battery life better than like an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 8. I think it does better than those and even better than the iPhone SE earlier this year. So this is better pickup than the SE earlier this year in terms of the battery lives. And talking about the main camera. Now I've talked about this a lot already, so I'm gonna show you samples in a minute. But what's really nice is the discrete factor of this phone. You, you have ultra wide angle right here. You have the regular zoom. And what's also nice is that you have the same basic mechanics of camera as you do on the larger iPhones. So like the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max, you just don't have that telephoto. Yes, you can't do HDR in 4K 60, but you can do it in HD 30, for example. You can toggle that in the settings. You can do 4K 60 on the front. I mean, to me, this is a pro camera in your pocket. The iPhone 12 Pro is just even more pro in your pocket. Like what I'm saying is you can do professional work on any of these iPhone 12s if you know what you're doing. Also, photography is great. And then if we go to portrait modes, those also have better detection, not getting blurs around your skin, I've noticed. This is my favorite pocket camera. This thing is so light and you have amazing quality on the go. But it still wouldn't be my first choice if I am taking my photography and video seriously because it's just not a massive screen to frame those photos. And when I'm editing, I would like more canvas to do that work on. So I love the camera. If you want portability, you want a pocket camera, this thing is an absolute beast. Take a look at the samples and let me know your thoughts. And that brings me on to the phone call quality, the performance of the modems in here, like 5G performance, stuff like that, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi 6 in here, blazing fast in this phone. Phone performance, thumbs up, no dropped calls. People said they could hear me fine. You know, I, I didn't really see a lot of drain, like low bars on this phone. I do have T-Mobile, so not the best network, but still it's solid. And it definitely performed better on this phone than some older iPhones with those Intel modems. So. I'm, I'm liking this overall day-to-day -day usage with mobile connectivity. I think it's just fine. And audio performance, this is my why I'm switching because I am switched to this phone right now. Because right after I was talking about the other phone here, they did release it. So very happy about that. And now I'm happy what you like about the mini is that it doesn't skip on the audio. It doesn't skimp. It doesn't give you some weak, trashy mics just because this is a small phone. It gives you clear mics, as much volume as they can squeeze out of this, they did. 
So all these little factors all combined to make this phone the total package for a small phone. I know you would like to see more battery life, but you know it's kind of difficult to get a huge battery in a light package and a small package like this. So keep in mind, that's one trade-off you had to make. So in conclusion of this full review, I just have to say, this is gonna be one of my last longer videos on this phone. I will do some more comparisons with you know, some of the other iPhones. So get the ones I haven't done down below, the ones you wanna see in. I will say, I will just state that if you're looking for you know, kind of a throwback to the iPhone 4S, the iPhone 5 SE, those older phones in design, this is the closest you're gonna to get to it. It's not quite as small, but it's very comfortable. It has a very nice width. It's a little bit tall compared to those devices, but the trade-off is worth it because you have so much more screen, but not so much more body. You have a lot of screen in your hand here that you can just hold very comfortably. So I'm very happy with this investment into the iPhone 12 mini. Let me know if you picked one up, share your experience with the community and thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. I will catch you all in the next episode. Thank you all very much for watching. Be sure to be well and peace.